Welcome back to Jesse's Barbershop, everybody. My name is Jesse, and if you're unfamiliar with me, I've been a professional hairstylist for the past seven years and a struggling YouTuber for the past year. And when I started my YouTube channel a year ago, the intention was to take my experience as a professional stylist and present it in a way that uh, I could help you guys at home figure out the best way to go about styling your hair and just give you guys some good content and information. And one of the main reasons that I had started this was I had seen a lot of the bigger channels that are out there centered around men's hair, whose information wasn't necessarily always up to my standard as a hairstylist. It's, sometimes it'd be good general information, sometimes it'd be this, this, but there's a lot of stuff that I've learned as a hairstylist that I think, you I mean, you only really get to understand uh, you know, when you're doing hair every day professionally for a long time. So I finally got to a point very early on that I decided I was the best when it came to this kind of stuff until I came across this guy. His name is Trav White. He's got a YouTube channel, 70 some thousand subscribers, and he's in the same space. Uh, he's into men's style and fashion stuff too, which you would not want to come to me about. I've been wearing the same shirt for the past three YouTube videos. But of course, in doing my research, uh, coming up with videos for myself, I'd come across his videos. And one in particular caught my eye. It was entitled, Five Common Ways You're Damaging Your Hair without realizing it. Now, normally I'm very skeptical when I come across these videos because up until this point, all the videos that I had watched uh, regarding this type of subject generally go something like this. Generic tip, generic tip, buy my hair oil. It's the best stuff out there. It's gonna fix all your problems. Generic hair tip, generic hair tip, outro. So when I saw Trav's video, I'd seen him around, but I hadn't really clicked into uh, too many of his videos, but I decided to watch this with the expectation of just going But what I found was what is super special about this guy is he actually knows what he's talking about. I don't think he has any professional training as a hairstylist. I think he's just super passionate about hair and really good at research. And I was just super impressed with the information. If I were to make a video on the same subject, I probably would have given the exact same five tips, which is why I'm making this video instead of just remaking his video that he did perfectly anyways. But what we're gonna do in this video is just go over what he was saying and hopefully give you guys a sense of the type of information that you guys should have as a standard for your research in terms of how to go about styling and managing your hair. So we're gonna go through that and uh, I'm just gonna be hopping in and out with some dialogue and narrative where I feel necessary. But uh, sit back, relax and enjoy because that's what we're gonna do now. So something that I've mentioned in a lot of my previous videos is the concept of what I like to call product buffering, which is basically a system designed to keep your hair in as controlled of a state as possible. Hair is very finicky, some more finicky than others. If you've got super smooth, fine hair with a very closed cuticle layer, it's super soft, super smooth all the time, you're gonna have to put a lot less work into keeping it healthy um, as opposed to somebody with my kind of coarser, frizzier hair type, which I know a lot of you guys have. And when it comes to things like washing your hair or how often you should wash your hair or how you should go about doing it, there's tons of different information out there on you know the approach that you should take. But what Travis is gonna get into here, is, I think is just a general solid piece of overarching information that anybody can apply to their hair, so. What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel. If you want the best evidence-based hair, grooming, and style content on the internet, please smash that like and subscribe button. Also studies show the harder you smash that thumbs up button, the more attractive you become. I wouldn't argue with science. And also this is something I'm gonna give to Trav is I don't do my research. I will openly admit all this stuff that I've learned. I learned back in hair school. I went through the textbooks. I learned all this stuff. But over the years, you just learn to practically apply it rather than dive super deep into the understanding of the science behind it. That's what Trav does really well, and you'll see as we progress in this video. One is, believe it or not, wetting your hair daily. I've had many people ask me, they say, since you say don't shampoo daily, is it okay if I rinse daily with water? Because I sweat a lot and I work out every day. And at the risk of sounding like a hair Nazi, I usually say, sure, go ahead. <laughs> That's something I do all the time. I've been in the industry long enough to know that none of you guys take my advice anyway. So most of the time, if people are just kind of offhandedly asking me a question, I'll just be like, yeah, whatever. Because realistically, unless you're doing something super bad to hair, it's not going to get to a point where it's super fragile and damaged. Not enough for me to care, which is kind of why I make these videos is because people who are interested are going to come across them, find them and watch them. But uh, that's really funny how huh? he's got the low tolerance of a hairstylist. 
just built inside of them. But in reality, it's actually not the best thing for your hair. So let me explain. Wetting your hair causes cortex swelling. And when the cortex swells, protein loss occurs temporarily while the cuticle scales are raised. This is fine when you shampoo one to two times a week because you're cleaning your hair and getting all the dirt and oil buildup out. So the trade-off is actually worth it. But when your hair swells and contracts on a daily basis, you can suffer from something called hygrol fatigue. And hygrol fatigue occurs from the repeated swelling and deswelling of the cortex. And water is one of the most common causes of cortex swelling. So over time, this stresses the hair and makes it more susceptible to breakage. Some early signs of hygro fatigue are things like over frizzing, your curls not curling, um, your hair is flat, it doesn't have any volume, and in extreme cases, it can cause breakage. So one study I found in the Journal of Cosmetic Science shows that coconut oil, again, the magic of coconut oil, helps prevent hygro fatigue. So this study was comparing coconut oil to mineral oil on which penetrated the hair shaft better, but they ended up finding it also helped prevent hygro fatigue. So first of all, when he's talking about cortex swelling, this is stuff that we learn literally first module in hair school, is understanding how hair responds to uh, water and stimulus and products and all this kind of stuff. So what I think is really cool about what Trav has done is he's basically taking, I mean, the stuff that we know as hairstylists and that we implement on our clients and on ourselves that just become kind of basic knowledge to us. He's explaining why it actually happens, which I mean, as far as I know, and as far as I've learned, this is all just bang on correct in terms of the science that's actually going on behind it and the physics of how your hair is responding to this kind of stuff. You know, very, very, very just, I don't know. I don't know how he does it. Tip number one, very impressive. Now, something else that I stress a lot on this channel is how you go about treating your hair. I mean, that starts from the product you use, how you wash your hair, I mean, your daily routine, everything factors into how your hair is going to respond to the natural environment and of course, how you treat it. And the bare basics of washing your hair is something that a lot of people will do every day, if not every other day. And I think should be a staple in terms of how you go about caring for your hair. Because washing hair is really that routine maintenance that uh, you need to do in order to make sure that your hair is in as optimized a state as possible for when you're styling it and trying to get it to do what you want to do. So that's what Trav is going to touch on here next. Number two is washing your hair incorrectly. Believe it or not, most guys wash their hair wrong. Especially as men grow their hair out, they tend to do the same thing that they would do when they had shorter hair, which is to lather it up and scrub the crap out of their head. And one thing I'll say is that suds and soap and shampoo are not an indication of the shampoo cleaning your hair. It's just like a visual peace of mind thing that makes people feel like it's working. And in fact, the lathers are usually made from sulfates and some sulfates can potentially damage your hair. I'll get more on that in tip number five. Going back to this tip, you wanna use lukewarm water. You wanna scrub gently and only on the scalp with shampoo. If you have long hair, you don't need to scrub all the way down to the ends. It could dry it out a little bit too much. The majority of the oil buildup and dirt is on the scalp. And so when you rinse the shampoo out of your hair, it'll pick up the remaining oil on the way down. After shampooing, you want to wring your hair out and remove that excess water in the shower. And you do this because you want your conditioner to be able to penetrate the hair shaft and too much water on your hair could prevent that. So be sure to wring your hair out before moving on to conditioner. Now, when you condition, you only want to condition the hair shaft. You don't want to scrub conditioner into your scalp. After you lather the conditioner on, you wanna let it sit for five minutes. I usually wrap my hair up into a bun and then I'll proceed to wash my body while, it's, while the conditioner sits on my hair for about five minutes. And then rinse it out and then you're done. So first thing Trav mentioned was the concept of lathering and sulfate. So as far as I know, sulfates are used as a detergent to actually strip the dirt and oils out of your hair. So, and this is something that I imagine is going to be a little bit controversial, but there's this big push for sulfate-free shampoos and all natural stuff that don't use any sulfates. My personal opinion is sulfates are designed to clean your hair. So if you have dirt and oil in your hair, sulfates are great for taking that kind of stuff out. However, when you're using a poor quality shampoo that the manufacturers don't really care how much or what concentration of sulfate they're using. And like Trav mentioned, they just try to get it to suds up as much as possible to give you the impression that it's washing hair. That's when things can go bad. But if you're using a salon quality, high quality shampoo, typically they're formulated in a way that isn't going to cause all these problems that these lower end sulfate dumped shampoos will. 
And then of course he touched on the different types of sulfates, which I could not give less of a crap about. Cause to me, first of all, if you have issues with these types of sulfates, of course it's something that you should consider. And then of course change shampoos if it's causing issues. But for me, I don't have that. So as long as it's not damaging my hair and it's cleaning my hair as much as I need, that's kind of how I base my shampoo recommendations off of. And that's the case for everybody else. So let's say somebody uh, is using a shampoo that that I've recommended that is causing irritation and it and it does have these sulfates in it that are known to cause these types of issues, that's when I would recommend maybe trying something else or even switching to a sulfate free shampoo. But if they have super oily hair and they need those sulfates to kind of lather that oil out, then maybe you gotta find a product that has sulfates, but maybe not that type of sulfate or maybe not that high a concentration of sulfate. Number three is actually drying your hair incorrectly. And this is the most common way I see guys damage your hair. And believe it or not, air drying is is the worst way to let your hair dry. I know that goes against everything people see on YouTube, but it actually is, and I have the study to prove it. Not everybody, Trav, me too, because I understand. So he's gonna do all the work in explaining the science behind it, but a lot of it stems from that concept that I had mentioned in the beginning of the video, where you want to be in control of your hair and its environment as much as possible. So when you put warm water in your hair, it blasts open the cuticle layer. Some of your hair is more resistant and closed uh, than other parts of your hair, and you just allow it to air dry by itself. What do you call it? I don't remember what I don't remember what he called. It. I'm trying to cycle through the video here. But cortex swelling. When water touches hair, the cortex swells and the cuticle layers open, open, close, open, close. That's not good. Imagine doing that to like a like a string or like a rubber band or a shoelace or something. The more that you create that tension, um, the less elasticity it has to kind of return to its state. The more you fondle with it, you know. So I mean, that's just something that you just we just understand as hairstyles. But nobody listens to when we're trying to give that advice, you know, in the chair or something like that. So very solid tip. And again, something that I mean only somebody who actually cares about hair or has done the research will know so very nice Trav. It damages the cortex more than blow drying does. So this study from Yonsei University's Institute of Hair and Cosmetic Medicine found that air drying damaged the cortex the most because your hair stays swollen, the cortex stays swollen for much longer, resulting in more protein loss. The study also found that blow drying only damaged the cuticle, which is that outer protective layer, and not the cortex. However, as the heat increased and the distance the blow dryer was from your hair decreased, the damage to the cuticle got worse. So the best way to use a blow dryer is on the lowest heat setting six inches away from your hair and constantly moving. And when it comes to blow drying, something you'll see in a lot of my videos is I get the blow dryer nice and close to my hair. That's because I know what I'm doing. When you're using a bore bristle round brush that's designed to seal down that cuticle layer, the heat and the tension created by the brush and the blow dryer will actually help seal down that cuticle layer and lock in any moisture and oils that are in there, which is why, I mean, I have a video on how to do that. But again, I mean, just in general, yeah, you wanna use as low heat as possible. But I mean, biggest thing, and and point of this section of the video is air drying despite what people say because they want to stay away from heat implements and unnatural stuff you just look at the science and the effect that it has and it's pretty obvious that there are better ways to go about doing it so again this guy knows his stuff i'm impressed now number four mistake is uv damage yeah the sun is one of the worst things for your hair so in october of 2008 a study was done in Croatia at the University Hospital's Department of Dermatology and Venerology. So the study found, and I'm quoting here, excessive sun exposure is the most frequent cause of hair shaft structural impairment. Photochemical impairment of the hair includes degradation and loss of hair proteins, as well as degradation of hair pigment. So protecting the cuticle is very important for keeping the hair shaft's integrity. And one can achieve that by avoiding harmful impact with the sun or by implementation of hair care products with UV filters. So you might be asking, what are some hair care products with UV filters? I am so glad you asked because whenever I can bring out more science, I will. So in January of 2010 at the Institute of Pharmacy at Shukla University in India, they conducted a study on the UV protection qualities of hair oils. The study said the SPF value of olive oil was found to have the highest SPF value among carrier oils. And among essential oils, the SPF value of peppermint oil was found to be the highest. There's not much more I can add about this section. Yeah, I mean, sun has a huge effect on hair. It's the closest thing to the sun and it's very finicky, which is why somebody with longer hair, in fact, you can kind of see it in Trav's hair towards the ends. I don't know if he has any color in it, but it's pretty common 
and for you know if you spend a lot of time in the sun some in texas where trav lives i mean you're gonna start seeing that pigmentation uh, leave the hair because it's been exposed to the elements and the sun a lot longer than the hair at the top so there's clearly an effect on the hair and just like anything else that the sun touches it has a drying effect and hair is super finicky did I mention? He also cites studies that have you know, actually gone into understanding why this all happens. And if you've been a subscriber of my channel for a while, you know how far I recommend staying away from just slapping natural oils into your hair that haven't been formulated for hair. Because things like coconut oil or argan oil, it's very heavy, unrefined stuff. And the reason that high quality hair products that use this stuff are so expensive is because they're formulating it in a way that's suitable for hair. And in fact, the good lines will have um, formulations that are designed for thicker, heavier hair, where maybe they use more and um, formulations for finer, thinner hair, where they use a lot less so it doesn't weigh down the hair. So that's kind of where the value of finding a high quality product line can come in is like, I mean, you know that they're using these ingredients that are designed to, like Trav said, seal down the cuticle layer, penetrate the hair shaft, um, but in a way that isn't just so aggressively heavy and oily. But again, bang on, bang on, man. So mistake number five is using the wrong shampoo. And this is shampoo that contains sulfates. So a common sulfate found in shampoos to give it that lather and those suds that everyone loves is called sodium dodacyl. So I think it's called that. Sodium dodacyl sulfate. Let's just call it SDS. So in March of 2005, a study was done in Brazil, but the study found that under friction, hair treated with SDS solution loses seven times more protein than just using water and protein loss increased as the temperature of the water increased as well. It's also possible for protein loss from excessive exposure to sulfates to weaken your hair, making breakage more likely over time. There was another study done in 1996 in Italy at the University of Modena's Department of Dermatology. And this found another common sulfate used as a lather in shampoo. And this one is sodium lauryl sulfate, which we'll just call it SLS. It found it's a cause skin irritation in some individuals that are low in ceramides, which is like a protective wax on your skin. So too much scalp irritation can damage your hair and cause it to prematurely fall out. You could temporarily lose hair as a result of scalp irritation, but not everyone's skin is affected by SLS. It's only the ones who are low in ceramides. So if you're getting irritation on your scalp after washing, check to see if your shampoo has sodium lauryl sulfate in it. So like I said, think of it this way. Sulfates have an effect on your hair. They clean the hair, they're a detergent and they get a lot of those oils out. But just like most things, it doesn't just do one thing. It's a little bit of a double-edged sword. And if you wanna be super safe, you can stay away from these sulfates and go to these uh, more popular sulfate-free shampoos. But if you're having issues with the actual cleansing of your hair, you might need something with a little bit of sulfate and maybe not a super high concentration, like I said. But my general rule is if you get a shampoo and conditioner from a product line that is reputable and in salons and has been around for a long time, they have put so much money and so much time into formulating these so that they minimize the amount of damage um, caused by these sulfates by using the appropriate amount and not cheaping out on the more expensive stuff that's in there like the oils but if there's anything to take from that last section or anything that i can add on to it it would be that if you want to avoid these bad sulfates just bite the bullet and get something that is higher quality. And of course, this is all if you care about your hair. And of course, everybody should care about the hair, but as I always say, it's just hair. So if you're watching these types of videos, either my stuff or Trav stuff or anybody else who's out there, you're looking to understand how to optimize and keep your hair healthy, this is the type of information that you should make your standard for understanding your hair and just hair information in general. But that's it guys. I just kind of had this idea because I came across the video and I mean, real talk, I was maybe a little bit high, but I was blown away by the amount of effort and time that Trav had put into his videos. And he's got a ton more that I've kind of gone through and have, I mean, had the same reaction where it's like, okay, this guy clearly knows what he's talking about. And if you guys have been a subscriber of mine and have been supporting me, first of all, thank you. But if you're into this kind of stuff and you like this type of information, I probably I promise you, I'm not gonna be around forever, but Trav White is immortal. So if you haven't yet, go check out his channel, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment in his video saying that I sent you or you're from Jesse's Barbershop because I'd love to be friends with him and hopefully he can set me up in Texas one of these days because it's too expensive here. He's, he's got a wife and I think a kid or something like that. So if you guys have been supporting me, I think it'd be really cool for you guys to head on over there and just share whatever support we can to help a solid video creator who personally 
has the Jesse's Barbershop stamp of approval. So we would really appreciate that guys. So if you've made it this far and you're new here and you haven't checked out my stuff yet, I would encourage you to go check out some of my videos because I've got all types of videos on men's hair tips, tricks, tutorials, all that kind of good stuff. And if you like it and you resonate with my vibe, hit that thumbs up button consider hitting the subscribe button because uh, we're almost at 10K and it's really helping out with the channel. I got a banger of a video set up for next week and uh, we'll hopefully see you then. And we'll hopefully see you in the next video. I f***ed that one up, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs>